got a camper van, converted van or a motorhome and considering van life, but wanna know how much it costs? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share how much it costs me to live each month in this motorhome, which I've done for, for the last five and a half years. Let's do it, shall we? The only stuff that's in this video is directly connected to running the motorhome or living in a motorhome per month. Um, now, some things I've, I spend a bit too much on, which you'll probably, you probably, you might agree, you might think I spend too much on. Some things I might not spend enough on. They are very subject to your own personal tastes and preferences. Um, but yeah, this is, this is my cost of living in a motorhome. If this is your first time at the channel, I'm Darren, I'm the other motorhome. I've lived in this motorhome for five and a half years now, predominantly parking urban, hence the name, urban motorhome. If that's something you like, then stick around and uh, yeah, enjoy the video. I did one of these videos about three years ago, and even till today, it's my most popular video on the channel. So I thought it's about time to update it because the cost of living is rising like no one's business. Fuel costs, food costs, every cost is going up, and there's no sign of them coming down. So I thought I'd update this video and share with you how much it costs to live in a, this per month. Right, let's start with the big costs, diesel and gas. Diesel is about 250 to 300 pound a month and gas is about 30 pounds a month. My gas bill has gone down a lot since last time I've done this video because I'm now using a diesel heater and I'm using a lot of electric and solar to cook. Um, so yeah, 250 pounds, 300 pound a month for diesel, depending on where I'm going for the month and about 30 pound a month for gas, even though gas has gone up considerably more than when I started this. Um, it's crazy how much it's gone up. Food and drink, now that sets me back about 160 pound a month. I buy a couple of cases of Pepsi Max, which that does cost me quite a bit, um, and a massive meat eater, bacon, chicken wings, any, meat, meat, meat. Um, I'm not massive on anything else really. I eat some pasta, some rice and some potatoes here and there, but yeah, I'm quite, uh, quite a confident cook. I'll throw things in the pan and I'll just whip something up. Um, but yeah, 160 pound a month, and that's me done really. Right, now we get to the fun parts. The fun parts. So this is, uh, well, they're essentials, they're must-haves. Um, so we've got MOT and service for the motorhome. So I get obviously get an MOT every year, and then I get a full service. Uh, so every filter gets changed, all fluids get dropped and replaced, uh, and they go over the whole lot and they check it. I've got a couple of garages that I go to and they're really good. Um, yeah, so I just give it to them, they just do everything. If anything needs fixing or something's like wearing out or anything, they let me know and I'm straight on it, you know. Um, but uh, MOT is about 50 quid, 50 quid a time and I can't remember how much a full service is. So I'm just gonna say 150. I'm probably off the mark there. I could be way over, I'm probably way over, but I'm just gonna say that's 200 pound all in you know that's a one time one time year cost and plus anything on top which we'll get to shortly uh breakdown cover uh, is there's a new one out um called mayday from green flag and caravan motorhome club and uh, it starts for like 75 pound a month uh, 75 pound a year um and their top end package is 132 pound and they've got no restrictions on the length of the motorhome and all this and that and they're pretty good i haven't used it yet and i don't want to use it um, but uh, 132 quid, so if you broke that down to monthly cost, that'd be like 11 quid. Um, then we've got insurance. Now my insurance is with the Caravan and Motorhome Club. And again, uh, if we broke it down, it'd be 31 pound a month, but I pay it up in one lump uh, each year, which is like 373 pounds, um, which is really good. Um, I managed to get it down quite a lot over the years. Um, by just competing, getting other companies to compete against each other. Um, Rotax, Rotax is 25 pound a month. I could pay this in a lump, but I just put it on the monthly. Um, so yeah, that is a total, what is that in total? Uh, if we're gonna divide it by 12 and then make it as a monthly payment, that'd be like 84 quid a month. And that's, you know, for my Rotax, my insurance, my breakdown, and my MOT and servicing, which are all essential really. They're just, you can't, you can't get around them. You could not have a service, but I wouldn't want to do that because I, I, you know, I'm in that 24 seven, I want that thing to work. So I'd rather have it full service every year and then something, whatever it needs doing gets done. 
Um, yeah, so when it comes to uh, problems, so if they come to me and say, oh, it needs a new, a new cam belt, which mine did need uh, last year. Now, it, they didn't come to me. I knew it was due for a new cam belt. Now, I've got like an emergency fund. Um, I said this in my last video. I've got a couple of thousand pound um, sitting there for the motorhome for the emergency fund. Now, I didn't just get this couple of thousand pounds, like two grand, just, you know, put picked up off the floor or whatever. It's not like that at all. Um, I've slowly built that pot up. Um, over time and then that pot sits there solely for an emergency with the motorhome. If it needs, if a tire goes and needs a new tire, bosh, I've got the money there. Don't have to think about it, do it. Apart from, and I said this once before, apart from a full engine rebuild or a blown engine, two grand should be able to uh, fix most problems. When something happens, unfortunately, it's horrible to say, but money fixes them problems. And so if you can have a little nest egg aside, a little emergency fund for the motorhome, for the vehicle, for the van, then it's gonna help you no end and give you peace of mind It went if slash when something does happen. Now, when it comes to internet, I've got two contracts, both are with EE. My phone contract is 31 pound a month for unlimited everything. And then I've got a SIM card just for the Wi-Fi in my motorhome and that is £26 a month, and that gives me 200 gig. Um, that's all from like my CCTV, the Alexa, everything like that. Um, so yeah, about £57 a month, give or take a little bit here and there. Um, but that's the cost of my internet, which is not too much, but could be better, could be worse, you know. And this isn't essential, but I've got a gym uh, membership. Not this one. <laughs> this one's for demonstration purposes only. Um, mine's with a university. Um, because all the ones around my area, there are a lot cheaper ones than I've got. Mine's £42 a month, and that's with a corporate discount um, through my work. And now it's because the ones in my area that are cheaper and they're 24 hours, mine's not even 24 hours, does, uh, doesn't have any parking for me at the times that I would be going. Um, so, but the one that I go to is one month rolling contract. It is a big car park, massive car park. They've got a swimming pool. They've got all the stuff I want. Um, it's great for showers and I'm, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit healthy, trying. Um, so if I do not use it for a while, then I'll just knock it on the head. But yeah, 42 pound a month for my gym. Um, it, makes it, it makes showering so much easier. But that's not to say that I can't shower and I don't shower anymore at home. It's just one of them added benefits of having a gym membership, you know? So but I would definitely recommend something like an Anytime Fitness or a or one of the other ones, that they're, they're pretty cheap and they're everywhere around the country and they're 24 hours. Mine's not. So yeah, they are pretty cool. Right, now, entertainment. It's not really an essential or necessity. Well, I think it is, to be fair, because like you're in the motorhome, you're in the van, evenings, you want to watch something on TV, you want to watch things, and we've all won streaming services. Now, I didn't know where to do this segment because I was going to be like, what do I do, go to a cinema? But then I saw this, the entertainer, I thought, wow, well, that kind of goes. You know, you could get some toys and kids' games and, and that, but once you've played a game or two, you, you want to watch something. Now, I've got all the streaming services, which is quite a lot of money. Um, I've got Amazon slash Prime Video, which is uh, £8 a month. I've got Disney Plus, which is like £80 a month, uh, which works out to about £6, £6.60 a month. Um, I've got my YouTube Premium account, which is a family account. So I share that with um, my, a, few, a few of my friends and family, and that's 18 pound a month. And then I've got Netflix, which I didn't know. I've actually got the high, highest Netflix in that because I share it with the family. And that's 16 pound a month. So that's like a grand total of like 48, 49 pound a month. You might as well call it 50 quid a month, um, which I spend on entertainment. Now, I do share it with all my family, so you know, they, they all get the benefit out of it. Um, I haven't seen an ad on YouTube in about two years, um, which is flipping amazing. I know a lot of you moan about ads and you don't want to pay it. I understand that because I know YouTube's trying to force it. But seriously, YouTube Premium is flipping amazing. Um, but yeah, entertainment costs, um, 50 quid a month. Right. When it comes to laundry costs, I spend about 30 pounds a month. Now, oh, sun, too bright. 
I mean, I've just picked up this now and this costs like 11 quid, um, which is really nothing at all. I leave it, I just turn up, I leave it for a service wash and I pick it up in a couple of days. I used to use the four quart washing machines a lot, um, but as this is so cheap and they get it done, you know, they fold it all up, it's all nice and neat. And yeah, I just pick it up in a couple of days. So no hanging around, just drop it off and go. So yeah, 30 quid a month. Campsites. How much do I spend a month on campsites? Now, hence, I said this at the very beginning of the video, my name's the Urban Motorhome because I predominantly park urban. So I, on average per month, spend zero. Um, I've got a little fund, like I've got an emergency fund for campsites. It's got like 200 quid in it. Um, if and when I want to go to a campsite, if there was a meet up or something, I can just use that. If for any reason, you know, it's been really bad weather and my solar is really bad or something, then I can just go on there. Or if I just want to go on there and chill out for a couple of days and not move, then I can. I don't have to think about it really. I don't know, just top that fund up as and when. Um, but yeah, predominantly, I don't spend any money on campsites. I park um, in urban streets, urban areas, um, just like this one here. So parked up here now. Um, this will be the park up for tonight. So no problems. Um, I've got tons of videos on the channel um, of how to find these park ups and how I park up and what I do and here, there and everywhere. Um, but yeah, they're... Uh, yeah. That is one of the, probably the major things that I don't spend my money on where some other people do. So that's how I keep costs low because I just park in, in urban areas. And I haven't had a problem in five and a half years doing it this way. Um, never had a knock, never had any issues. And yeah, it seems to work. So I spend on average zero. Three things that I need to mention that I haven't already gone over yet is pocket money, water, and waste. All right, <laughs> random three, I know. Pocket money, I give myself about uh, 60, 60 to 80 pounds a month um, just to keep on my hip or on my card. I don't really keep cash anymore. Um, just for walking around money. So if I'm out and about, I want a Pepsi, I buy one. If I'm doing this, doing that, and I need a little, a little bit of money, I buy it. Now again, I could give myself more, I could give myself less. But I think that's a, a fair amount of money for the month. Um, again, if something pops up and I've got money in savings and something really happens like, you know, a camera breaks or something and I have to replace it, then that's gonna happen. But, but that money's just there, just for, you know, walking around money, you know, when we're out about with friends. When it comes to fresh water, um, I haven't, I don't really pay for that. I, I buy some when I'm shopping, like I buy a five litre barrel um, here and there, um, just for inside the motorhome, so I've got some. Predominantly, I get all my water from the four courts when I'm filling up uh, diesel. 99% um, of them never have a problem because you're going to fill up, you know, 100, 200 pounds worth of diesel, whatever, um, depending on your tank size. And I've never had a problem. If they do say no, you can't use it, or you know, sorry, you're not allowed to, then I'll just go to another another four court and I'll fill up diesel somewhere else. Not a problem. Um, I've got a video up here if you want to watch that about finding uh, finding water and all the places I do find water. So if you need to know need to know anything about that, then check on check that one out. Uh, and cassette waste, where do you empty your toilet? One of the biggest questions I ever get. Um, I've done a whole video about that, which I'll pop up here as well. Um, but the long and short of it is uh, public toilets, um, campsites, which will let me on. There's a few campsites I know now and they know what I do. So they let me on for a couple of quid, uh, fiver, just to empty all my waste, fill up the water and all that. Um, then there's a few um, friends' houses and there's, there's a whole, there's, there's not really that many places that I need to go because I've got quite a few now. And like I say, there's a video up there. Um, but again, I don't really pay for that apart from a couple of quid here and there on a campsite. Um, and my toilets last quite a while, my cassette lasts quite a while, which I'll go through in that video. So if you want to know any more about that, then you can go ahead on over there and that will teach you everything you need to know and tell you everything you need to know. It's not teaching you much, but, <laughs> um, but it'll tell you everything you need to know. Now I've gone through the numbers. Some of you might be thinking, oh, that's quite a lot, £752 a month. And that's on the diesel on the high, high end of the scale. I might as well take the high end number. I'm not gonna take the small number because I might as well overestimate rather than underestimate. So yeah, 752 pound for the month. You can see all the costs here. Um, they'll be on the screen now. Um, which yeah, 
If you're in saving mode, and some people are doing van life to save and save hardcore, then yeah, that might be a lot. I'm not doing it to save money. I'm doing it because I love it, because I found happiness, I found freedom. I'm doing exactly what I want to do, how I want to do it. And I am still saving money because I'm working full time. So that is, is great but I'm not, that isn't my aim, the reason I'm doing it. So I think that's quite a reasonable price to be spending per month. Um, I, could, I could, you know, save more. If I cut out like the gym, the streaming services and the extra Wi-Fi and just have, just have my mobile phone contract, then I could be saving an extra 117 pound a month. So that would bring the cost down quite a lot. Now, I'm not going to do that, but if it, you could do that if, if you if you was in saving mode, and I mean that brings the overall monthly cost down to like six hundred and thirty-five pound a month, which is really good. Now, like I say, all these costs are subject to your personal preferences, how you do things. You know, you might spend half that amount on food, you might spend double the amount on on diesel. You know, you might be travelling to Timbuktu and back every month. But now you know how much it costs to live full time in a motorhome and, and live van life in the UK per month. And now you've learned that, why not head on over to this video where me and a few others will teach you everything we know about how to park up wild camp, boondock, off-grid camping, whatever you want to call it. That video is a cool crew of a video if you want to start wild camping, which will reduce your costs. And then head on to this video where I talk about all the tech that I used to live in this for the past five and a half years. Take it easy, guys. Bye.